modulus stress over strain. So you can kind of use the, the, the equation to help you define. So what is Young modulus? The stress over strain. It's a ratio uh, strain of a material. The more accurate way of representing, I guess, if it's a curvy graph, so you know Young modulus sometimes got curvy, curvy like that one, then you have to look at uh, the, the, the stress over strain at the part where it is linear, so at the beginning part. But anyway, they just want definition, right? Stress over strain, okay already. If you mention stress over strain, strain, you are good to go. So we have a metal rod that is compressed, just like any pillar in your house. The variation with force over length is shown. Wow, this is a weird graph. Why they put length against force? Isn't it usually force against length? I don't know. They purposely put like that to confuse us. So this is the length of the rod itself become shorter and shorter. No? So you squash it, it becomes shorter. <coughs> Ratio of stress over strain. Can the idea is stress over strain. Yeah. Determine the spring constant of the rod. Spring constant. Nah. We need to think to our the only place we know spring constant is Hooke's law. The K. Where does the K appear? F equals to KX. Can apply memes? Uh well, it looks like a straight line. Usually we say straight line through origin, but wait a second. This is extension. This is not extension. This is the length. So to find that, we got to rearrange a little bit. So K equals to force over extension, which is really force over the change in length. Or change in force or change in length. Now. Up to you. I'm going to talk about it that way. So pick two points on the graph. It might be a bit hard to see for you guys online. You have to go and see, okay, let's start with the beginning and go to the end. At the beginning, zero force, you have 150 mm extent, uh, length. After you squash it, it becomes shorter, 90 kilo newton, a kilo newton. Oh no, if you've got the kilo and the milli, maybe you want to underline that and make note to self. Hey, got prefix here, be careful. And this is 148 millimeter. So we use these coordinates, we plug in the values down here. So change in force, if I use the first and last point, you can use any point now, as long as you can, I, I choose the last point for convenience. So this will be 90 minus, sorry, y first. Force k, x, k, f, okay, so this one, 90 times 10, where is the power? 10 to the 3 kilo. 90 minus 0 is just 90. La. Then the change in length. We go from 150, change down to 148. So we got to write that in. 150, 148. Times 10, negative 3. Careful of the prefix. You need to include those as well. So this one will give you a very big number. 45 times 10 to the 7. Big, big number. If you manage to get that and write that in the answer line, that is one final mark, accuracy. Another mark comes, they're very generous. They see you knowing to find force over extension or force over change in length. 4.5, oh, my calculator problem. I think it's 4.5, sorry, sorry. 4.5. Ah, this one. Come, I do one more calculator check. 150 minus 148 times 10. Negative 3. Ah, yes, 4.5. Good catch. Thanks for raising it up. Okay, so you managed to write this out, mark this one. Go to the side. This one's a bit tricky, but still okay. Lah. Determine the strain energy stored in the rod for 90 kilonewton. So the rod is originally a very chill one. Then when you squash it to become shorter, you are putting in some potential energy. The moment you let go, the rod might come out. Lah. Might become longer. Right? Maybe. If it's not permanently, plastically deformed. So for strain energy, there are two ways to calculate it. Half Fx or half Kx squared if it obeys Hooke's law. <coughs> and, well, which one shall we use? I usually prefer to use this one if possible. You know why? 
because oh, this k is a calculated value. I calculate in part one. So if my value of k is wrong, oh, then if I use the wrong value here, wrong already. Lo. Right? Your k, you just found it here. You could use it, but there's a risk that maybe this one got some careless mistake. Whoops. You also lose a mark here. So I prefer to use, whenever possible, original values. So half, hmm, <clears throat> I need to choose 90 kilo newton. Okay, given to me. 90 kilo. An extension at 90 kilo newton. We already found it, but let's go see the graph again. <clears throat> ah, 148. So we put, put in your 148. Wait. 148 is length. You want the change in length. So extension is the change in length. So we need to take 148 minus 150 again. Or 150 minus 148. So we take 150 minus 148 times 10, negative 3. This time it will give us 90. So 90 Joule. One for final answer. One for your... Uh, half kx square or half fx equation you write that somewhere okay give you a mark and one for correct substitution of values so this this line you sub in correctly then you get this mark so see the c one sometimes for equation sometimes for substitution one okay now both is okay now the last part so your rod uh that we use has cross section area a young modulus e I guess we could draw it again, but never mind. But then there's a new rod that has the same original length. And this new rod, what is different is the cross-section area now is smaller. Ooh. And the young modulus is bigger. Oh, stronger but thinner. So the compression of this new rod obeys Hooke's law. Okay, obey Hooke's law means we can know that it's going to be a straight line, f equals kx. But now we have to sketch the variation with f of length for the new rod from 0 to 90. Huh? Okay, okay, okay. So everything is same except for the new, which is new area, new young modulus. So what you really have to do is you have to go and figure out how to draw. Do we just draw like this? Do we just draw like this? Can I draw anyhow or must I have exact values? They give you exact values and... Well, best to calculate exact values. This is two marks, right? So I'll give you the answer first, and then we'll see how to find the answer. So the 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 new rod, okay, original rod is quite big. New rod is same length but much thinner. Higher young modulus. New. You have to start from zero fifty because same length. So your first point should pass through zero. Or if you redraw the graph on your paper, you must label 150 in the y-intercept. Then your second point, you must join and uh, you must end at 90 because you're stretching from zero to 90, right? But the extension or the length will be different already. It will extend a little bit more. So you must end at 147. So the answer should go from. I'll try my best to draw this again. Hoya, 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 hoya. Can you please go to the spot? Oh, yes. All right, so whatever answer you choose or whatever answer you draw should end at this point. I cannot. Okay, can. So one mark for starting at 0, 1, 5, 0. One mark for ending right here. This is A1. This is M1. The question is, how do you know to end at 9147? One for start, one for end. You have to figure out the ratio of how the equation has changed. Since we're here looking at the graph, why don't we think of an equation for this graph? So let's go back to Hooke's law. F equals to kx, or rather, Let's think about Young's modulus, E equals to FL over AX. This graph, they are plotting L against F. 
So we have to figure a way to rearrange this L against F. But this is L not. Wait a second. L not L against X. If extension is hidden here. So this will be L minus L not. Okay, so let's put the L minus L0 over this side. E, I move to the other side, AE. Right? And I have almost a straight line equation. I just need to do a bit more adjusting. So L equals to F times all this stuff, which we assume is constant, times F plus L0. Okay, I did some rearranging here. Now, this is really the equation of this graph that we just draw. How we know because it's straight line equation. Y equals to what's the x axis? Force. What's the intercept? L naught. Okay, so y equals mx plus c. This is this, this is this. So gradient is all this stuff. So when we change the young modulus and we change the a, what does it affect? You have to look <coughs> at the equation if you want to find the exact value. <coughs> so you see here. <coughs> A and Young Modulus, that's probably going to affect our nice gradient. Intercept should be the same. Gradient is the one that's changing. So you can do something like this. Gradient equals to, well, let's say M. La. M equals to L naught over A E. These are the things that are changing. So our original gradient, let's call this M1, is these values. But now you have a new gradient. M2 equals to L0 is the same, but your A is now several times larger or smaller, one third smaller. Ne? You see here? Your Young's modulus is two times bigger, so two times of the original. So, what's the new gradient? Well, in terms of the first gradient, if we take out all the new factors, this will be 3 over 2 of. L not A E and L not A E we recognize as the original gradient. So this one is your gradient should be 3 over 2 times of your original gradient. Now this is how you know how steep to draw the graph. Wow, I mean so much looking for too much. Well, you could eyeball your way through and do some shortcut ratios, but this is how we're gonna do this. So you need to find what's the original gradient which is actually negative, I think I calculated that day, 1 over 45. So your new gradient should be, if you multiply together, negative 1 over 30. Then you do again now, y equals mx plus c, find the point, draw the gradient. 